let's get uh, started with uh, today's lecture. Hello. Uh, um, can you please scan in again in the usual manner uh, with your library card? Today we really have the follow-up uh, to the project teams. So um, the psychology comes actually, I uh, have uh, reshuffled it a little bit under the topics with the guest lectures. We actually have swapped a little bit the uh, big topics around. Yeah, but we cover the whole syllabus either way. So uh, today we really look at the uh, um, uh, organizational side. Yeah, so last time we talked a little bit about maturity models. Uh, today we talk about skills development, uh, shaping, developing and managing people. We have such topics as well as organizational health or, or in the UK literature you find that more under occupational health actually. Yeah, and uh, diversity, equality, topics like this. And a little bit, uh, how are we actually recruiting today? And this is where a critique, a societal, uh, 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 society, uh, um, <laughs> critique at the beginning that I want to actually uh, um, bring your attention to. And then in the following week, we look actually at virtual teams. And then we will cover a lot of the psychology as well, yeah? which is as well applicable to the project management team and very important for you as a project manager to understand the dynamics. Yeah? So um, we will have jump like this was actually supposed to come after, but now it's coming before. Yeah? So I hope that makes sense. Okay, Let, let's get started. Overview. Oh no, do I have bullet points all the way? Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. So we start really by the context of the project-oriented <coughs> society. Some of you may have seen it because I have uh, promoted it last semester as a video was a conference talk, there's actually a professor that made a, a, a public debate out of it, but uh, um, yeah, uh, it, it's probably good to remind ourselves of that as well. And then we go a little bit into the project management personnel, look at processes of human resource management. Within this are as well the current uh, um, bigger themes of equality and yet diversity, inclusiveness, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll show you a little bit uh, what the correlations are to uh, productivity. And then uh, in the end, we actually come to the role of the project management office. Uh, but here again, just focusing really on the role uh, on the uh, skills, well, at the, at the development really of the project organization. So it's a limited application. We don't necessarily look at the project management uh, governance itself in detail. Yeah? Because this is next semester. Or you had it already, depending on where you are. Okay. So what do I mean by this uh, uh, context of the project-oriented society? Yeah, you, you may have noticed it. You may be actually uh, um, evident here yourself. Yeah. So uh, empirically, uh, um, a lot of you probably are not from Newcastle. It's a notion that we have. Uh, um, changed a little bit our uh, setting, so it's a trend to the project-oriented society as a global trend, yeah, we mobilize. So we, we have this, uh, uh, one fascinating ph phenomena is that we actually move into cities, which was really uh, strange if you think about it. Yeah, if, if you own land, anyway, uh, okay, I won't ask that question, but if you own land, yeah, often it's a place where you grow up, uh, where you feel belonging, and uh, we have that strange uh, um, thing uh, that, that brings us to cities and kind of mobilizes us because it's a promise of something. Yeah? So there's a promise of a better life, there's a, a promise of uh, um, potential gains you know, that you can bring back. But many people don't go back uh, to their countryside. So this is a little bit the hidden dimension of that. Then uh, um, projects and programs have become the driver of our delivering of uh, strategy and change objectives. Yeah, so we, we don't necessarily agree that anymore at uh, a regional or, or community basis, but we have actually moved into uh, um, yeah, organizations that sit within a, 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 a particular interest stream. Yeah? So it, it has as well a, a, a dimension here and supports a relatively mm -hmm. high number of project-oriented organizations. Hence, you have made the very wise career choice. Yeah? Uh, as a project manager, you're certainly uh, one of the people that benefits directly from this. Yeah, and uh, it requires specific com uh, uh, competences for managing of projects, programs, and portfolios that sometimes appear counterintuitive. Yeah, so you may have grown up in societies that are actually not organized or, or not used to this project-oriented society. Yeah, so 
unfortunately, uh, the, what we hoped on in the past, the experience from our uh, maybe people around us, may not actually reflect what we need to do. This is very bad. Uh, this is when it's counterintuitive, difficult to get the head around. Yeah? But uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, um, uh, in a way, uh, um, you are studying it, so you are our hope of the future, if you want, yeah? uh, or, or we trust in you. Uh, and uh, last but not need, uh, least, um, there is of course as well the implication that the structures are in place to further develop these uh, uh, management competencies that you can actually adapt to this environment. Yeah? So a big plea, uh, um, quite heavy. So what does that actually mean? Uh, um, I have broken it down in my uh, slightly yeah, uh, um, philosophic uh, way. So uh, it, it's literally the notion that we are likely to work more in temporary organizations. It means uh, um, you may not work together with the people around you all the time. So you may find them useful as an enlarged network uh, um, for, for feedback, but we come to that in a second. So how do those uh, trends uh, manifest? Um, uh, those are the keywords um, that we actually use for those. Uh, um, so project-oriented society, the participants can be recognized as project nomads. Uh, so uh, especially if you want to be a, a professional project manager, you want to have a wide profile, maybe work on mega projects, then this fits uh, absolutely your category. Now you'll be, you will be very likely to travel around with where the big projects are, now the specialized projects that you're interested in. Um, another notion was the knowledge worker. This is uh, uh, pretty much the whole standardization of qualifications as an orientation point to actually recruit from other places. In the past, we did the training ourselves in the company yeah, you would be a trainee, maybe an apprentice in some countries, and you would learn on the job, and you would be trained to be fit to run the business locally where you're based. Yeah, nowadays, we, we have actually uh, conceptually understood what's needed in, in a broader uh, conceptual knowledge area, and uh, would we have a good uh, understanding how to apply that to the locality. There will be conflict points, but a knowledge worker is known to be adaptable to that. Yeah, and then we, we have as well uh, um, a slightly criticized notion of that, one being the freelancer. Free, freelancer, what, what do you associate with this? What is freelancer? Temporary uh, contract. Yeah, and, and uh, is this good? Is this a good job if you get a freelance? Uh, uh, it's insecure. Because you don't have the security of the continuous contract. So if you're all, um, like while you're working on a project that's finished, you're not certain that you will work on the next project after that. Depends on the amount of risk you want to take, I guess. Okay, so there's a little bit of a risky notion that uh, is a freelancer good work? Uh, are they, uh, what, what do you do as a freelancer? If you're a freelancer uh, um, as a project manager, what would that be? Well, you might go to a site which is not running according to planning or it's not running yeah. like according to budget, so you go there to see what the problems are to try to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, this, this would be uh, one good example. Yeah. Uh, um, actually, the, uh, um, in my, uh, my association, I wanted to say, but uh, in the Association for Project Management, there are a lot of project managers that have actually specialized on such things. Yeah. They are freelancers uh, um, for uh, um, uh, going on sites when projects kindly get off track yeah, to basically assess the project and bring it back on, uh, uh, on, on trail. If you're interested in uh, what, what uh, uh, works as in flutes. Um, one of the colleagues that is as well guest lecturer uh, is uh, um, the project doctor. So you, you write it literally like that into Google and they have their templates, how they assess the projects. And uh, they're, they're booked out. You, you cannot get them on a short notice, notice which uh, kind of defeats the purpose. But uh, um, yeah, so they're doing very well in that. Yeah. But uh, um, this is where the uh, uh, mercenary uh, uh, notion. So freelancers normally uh, are quite associated with a positive notion. Yeah? You are so good in what you're doing that people come to you and ask you to perform your piece in the greater project. Yeah? Because they, can, they, they trust in your skill set and your ability to deliver. But what is a mercenaries? Uh, what, what is a, a counter notion there? What is a mercenary? Contractually, roughly the same. The opposite, 
he has to end the project. I'm not sure. In, in what? No, sorry. If, if a project um, like is, is certain to fail, then he has to close it out. Maybe someone else. I, I don't know. Okay. Oh, uh, so you you think the merchant uh, uh, merchant would be the one that uh, if the project fails, he comes in to basically uh, put it to the grave. Yeah. Uh, so in other words, yeah. So uh, close it down. Um, I know this is not a notion really. The the merchants were really renowned more for being bought in to deliver a service, um, and they deliver it no matter uh, um, of the local requirements. You know? so it's, it's they literally just perform to the river. So the freelancer was actually associated with that uh, uh, wide horizon. Uh, uh, it's quite a f uh, if you look at the definition, it says she's somebody that can adapt to different environments and is very good at applying their skill to the environment. Yeah, while the merchants literally just come in and do what they always did, no matter where they are. Yeah, and there are the implications with this. Yeah, so in other words, uh, um, it may create like uh, alienation of the population uh, where, where the project is performed, or um, yeah, it, it can create as well uh, issues with actually um, working on from whatever they have delivered. Yeah. So, uh, but the, the key notion here that I wanted really to come to is the recognition of competences becomes an issue for even for the uh, project person belonging to permanently to the project organization because if you bring in uh, um, new uh, um, <coughs> workers, you, you have to adapt it. You have to understand what they are really bringing to the project. And this is a tough challenge for project managers well to get your head around. Yeah. So the individual needs to shape their professional development to uh, keep employable. You know, this is always a driver as well for the knowledge worker. You're promoting yourself with past projects, you know, so you, you want to work as well on the right project. But at the same time, the project may require you to do something that uh, is, is not uh, so interesting for your future development. Yeah, so there are certain uh, constraints with Um, so, how, how do we actually um, organize around that? Well, um, the primary functional notion is really um, only undertakes projects for specific change or on occasions. Uh, classical human resource management would be such a thing, a functional resource allocated <coughs> to the uh, project. Yeah? So, um, you basically perform in your functional capability. And then uh, the project oriented notion is the uh, um, more uh, product or, or service oriented one, so that is the majority of business activity if project based. Uh, um, the present and the future resources requirements of the organizations are uncertain. People follow careers other than climbing the ladder up the functional silo, and people may not uh, have a functional home to belong to. Yeah? And, and uh, uh, with this, there comes a whole raft of um, issues associated uh, to it. Yeah? So you, you may actually see as well that you have uh, um, uh, a slight uh, um, yeah, uh, lack of buy-in from certain professions if you are asked uh, um, if you ask them to perform a certain way. Yeah, so this is often where potential old trade or uh, um, as well professional agreements come in. Yeah. So um, what, what is the problem with this? Uh, um, so there are uncertain requirements to, to look in, in this one dimension that I named. Um, effectively, you are grading the job, not the person. Uh, so you, you have a role associated in the project orientation, uh, oriented uh, um, organization, and uh, in its sense, you're not looking if they're a good civil engineer, you're just looking if, if they're performing as a civil engineer, the role that you need for your project. Does that make sense? Uh, so there, there's a slight shift here. Yeah, um, it means as well that he gets evaluated if this actually fitted within the team. Uh, he may has, has done everything that is required from him or her yeah, in, in, uh, in that role um, under a professional point, but there's still this translation into the project setting that it fits as well into the team performance to deliver. Yeah? So uh, work well done on a project and uh, let them define the job around them. Um, then we had as well the project biz as the employment uh, mechanisms. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, this creates as well deep dilemmas if you're then bidding for projects where certain specialisms are not required. Yeah, so people literally can f fall out of their professional career and uh, back in again. And uh, this is as well uh, a dynamic that we will discuss a little bit later. 
Whistles uh, comes as well, uh, a wonderful term that uh, um, uh, yeah, I have only a conference paper on that so far, but it's a competence spiral. It's a notion that uh, um, in, in every project, if you don't take projects on in a, a very wide uh, um, diversity, uh, if you're focusing on construction projects, you do house building, you do hospitals, you do maybe even uh, um, a little bit infrastructure, yeah, then, then you will uh, be very quickly in a uh, um, competence spiral because you will be an absolute uh, uh, expert. Yeah? So um, your projects may have framed you into a niche and when it now comes to different projects, then uh, there's always a certain uh, um, issue because uh, people feel slightly uncomfortable if you don't have the relevant experience, which is a pity. Yeah, the skills framework actually identifies that uh, um, certain expertise is useful. So the competence spiral is really a, a, a notion yeah, that we refine our understanding and depths and that can be limiting when you try to move actually sideways. Yeah, whereas the project, uh, actually for you as a project manager, this may not be as critical as for other uh, um, specialist uh, um, professions that you may have on your team. And uh, uh, with this comes as well uh, um, the sidetrack of the spiral career. So what, what is the example? Um, we, we had that uh, a lot of quantity surveyors, for example, in the UK, if you want to have professional accreditation, you have to cover a certain remit of different works. This is the, the companies that I know in quantity surveying that don't have more than 50 employees. It's nearly impossible to work on all these project aspects. So it means you will have to leave the company if you want to become a fully accredited <coughs> quantity surveyor. Does that make sense? Yeah? And uh, project management is probably uh, um, easier equipped for that yeah, because you, you uh, have, of course, your different roles on the project that you can work on and get your insight from. But for other uh, um, uh, uh, roles that we have in construction or professions, this is a real dilemma. Yeah? That's as well why you have quantity surveying companies that have to specialize themselves just on that do basically the, the client guidance here by uh, advising them on the pricing and costing, <laughs> bidding and so forth, and then uh, specialize as well on the cost management of, of the project. Uh, so th this is actually quite a common uh, way of, of getting around that. So good news, a uh, 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 more varied and interesting career uh, can be an aspect of it, uh, but this normally just appears to the project manager, uh, because they see the direct gain thing. Uh, so for you this is very good because you have the different opportunities to look into uh, um, different fields uh, with the project plans yeah, and see how it's actually uh, um, uh, uh, impacted. Yeah, there's a side effect from that, so be very aware of this when it comes actually to that notion with the different professions. Um, there's a no-home syndrome, yeah? so this is actually something observed that has even uh, kind of um, depressed uh, professions. Yeah? So we know that there are stress-related issues so this is uh, uh, quite a grim picture for, for some of our professions that we have in construction, but uh, um, we have you as well as a project manager that, that can us lead, uh, lead us uh, uh, through those uh, grim times. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So from a development point of view, this is actually quite uh, uh, unbeneficial. Yeah? That, does that make sense? It's, it's quite a dark view, yeah? but uh, uh, literally uh, we, we normally compensate with informal mechanisms come to that in a second uh, and uh, um, compensate uh, on a human notion, but it's often not captured in the organizational setting. Uh, this is actually quite uh, fascinating in construction. Okay. Where, where does this all come from, the project-oriented uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, structure and uh, the temporality of <coughs> our organization? Um, I've just listed that to give you an idea. Yeah, but. Uh, um, we have a lot of different stakeholders that are not necessarily holistically uh, um, combined under one of umbrella organization. So those people are most likely not from one company. Does that make sense? What that means as well is they may hold for the project the responsibility for you to perform, but in the long run, they hold no responsibility. You hold the responsibility. So you have to manage it. Does that make sense? So, in a way, as a project manager, you should really as well decide on the skills development on site, for example, for your workers. Effectively, we will come to that, I show you the economy that we have on that. Uh, this is in my research area, 
uh, it's actually quite grim. In the UK, we, we are not so good at this. Yeah? Well, actually, we are very good contractually, but we, we are not so good in enforcing it. Yeah? So there's a huge opportunity, actually, to, to integrate it. Okay, but uh, to talk you through, so uh, uh, personal working under temporary structures, most likely from different companies uh, with a different private interest. And private interest is normally is quite, quite limited. Yeah? The, you may work in a work environment where it's more uh, collaboratively, uh, from a culture point of view, uh, this, this is good. Then, then you may recognize people <coughs> and, and you know them and you, you have a good relationship. But uh, uh, most likely uh, the project owner, project sponsor, or project champion may come, uh, sometimes even those roles may be divided. Uh, then you have the project manager, uh, you may have a, a project leader or project director that kind of has a supervisory role or, or enforces actually the project on the construction side depending on the size. Then you may have project management assistant, assistants, yeah, uh, um, if it's a few more. Uh, project controller, this is normally something, has, has anybody come across that term, project controller? Normally large uh, uh, engineering projects, yeah, so um, the power plants that we are building here at the moment, you have said, and uh, um, the Americans and Germans like that a lot. It's literally cost control uh, and enhanced. There yeah, was uh, uh, more managerial power to uh, um, make decisions. Yeah. Then you have the project team members. You may even have a team manager yeah, and, and project uh, uh, contributor. So those may be services that uh, are directly linked in. And keep in mind, so those may not actually, uh, um, they, they may all come from different uh, companies. So the responsibility that we're talking about now is uh, mostly with the company or, or with the individuals themselves in, in some cases. And uh, um, th this is a big problem if, if you try to change something proactively in your supply chain. Yeah? So in other words, if, if you are trying to adopt new ways of doing construction, you have new technologies, you have heard from me, yeah, like Strabag is building now the motorway, uh, a five-year project in two, and yeah, they make a profit of 40%. Yeah, this incentivizes a lot of uh, smart project managers. Yeah? Um, but uh, um, this means as well you have to change your whole supply chain. That means it's actually out of your company. And that is quite risky. Yeah, you need really buy-in on the supply chain then. Okay, there, there are some more. I have the program managers in as well. If you have a corporate company, then there may even be strategies and portfolio managers. So it, it gets uh, um, quite uh, fragmented in terms of uh, private interest and has uh, certain aspects. Yeah? So. Um, Personal working under permanent structures, yeah, uh, often labeled as uh, uh, project executives or, or um, actually project manager yourself. Uh, th by the way, this is an oxymoron. Yeah? In, in project organizations, you as a project manager have excellent training. I can promise you that. Yeah? I, I haven't yet seen uh, uh, in the largest, uh, actually I have to be careful here. Uh, in our survey, we can see that project managers are trained well. Normally the company is very considerate on building you up and working on different uh, projects. You, you, there, there's one weakness, uh, project management uh, 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 based companies tend trying to work you a little bit harder than you should. Yeah? So be aware of that. But uh, uh, normally it, it comes in hand with very good training for you. Yeah? So project management, a uh, good profession uh, in, in that sense, yeah? if you want. But uh, um, uh, in, in a permanent structure, um, you, you uh, uh, would find probably the project management office and the personnel attached to that. So that may be the office leader and other members. Yeah, so here you may actually have planning assistants, yeah, uh, potentially quantities of yeah, costing and, and bidding uh, preparation, mm -hmm. things like that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, they are often the process owner of the project management process. Yeah, within the project-oriented company. So they uh, um, look as well after things like knowledge management, uh, uh, info, I ICT solutions, for example, yeah? uh, um, what their preferred methods are. Yeah. And, and finance uh, reporting mechanisms are often as well into that. Um, then uh, um, a step up from the project management office is often the project portfolio group members that take the responsibility for strategic options. I haven't actually seen that, that there's a portfolio office and a project management office. They often compete. Now there's as well, um, actually if you work in France, more often there's a program office, yeah, so, uh, which is quite interesting. So they look at it again in a slightly different structure. 
but uh, no, no matter where the uh, um, uh, ownership uh, sits, those are often the permanent structures, support structures for our projects. Yeah. And then, uh, as Sartov said, we, uh, um, uh, so they, they really focus on the um, uh, quality and the enabling of the uh, um, project process, not so quality project process, sits with those guys. And then you have, of course, quality management, which uh, um, focuses often on the product quality. Uh, so those are the two dividing forces, if you want. Uh, so if you have uh, um, particular materials that need particular quality standards, or, or um, you, uh, yeah, you, you have uh, yeah, products or, or um, particular services that are required, this often uh, sits with the quality management personnel. And here you find auditors, reviewers, coaches, consultants, uh, often as well brought in. Yeah. If you don't have some yourself, and uh, um, then the expert pool of personnel that you have focused on. Yeah. So uh, here, here in the UK, in the North East, we have at the moment an interesting trend um, in, in some local uh, companies that try to uh, work um, in a sustainable way. They have actually started recruiting again a lot of uh, um, you know, special what what was for, uh, formerly uh, specialist contractors that have taken on board and do now a lot of the um, uh, work on site themselves with their teams. Uh, so there seem to be uh, um, some positions on, on construction work where um, this kind of expertise is again feasible to have in-house. Uh, uh, um, if you're interested, I, I make a little bit of advertisement just for a good case study. Yeah, Gen 2 here in the region, they have just started that. Yeah, they, they are taking now uh, um, uh, craftspeople on, uh, to work with uh, certain insulation standards and trying to comply to green gear and related uh, um, yeah, uh, assessment uh, um, tools that allow you to uh, um, identify a certain quality. Yeah. Okay, if we actually refine on that, uh, um, uh, company interpretations uh, differ enormously. Yeah, so you, you see as well the shift where we are talking now about uh, project management uh, competencies. So um, uh, companies normally interpret that uh, um, as technical competence and non-technical uh, competencies, um, which is quite, what well, are the technical competencies in, in uh, project management? What would you uh, uh, name as such? <coughs> What are our technical ones? Using uh, MS Project, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, very good one, yeah. So uh, um, MS Project, yeah, uh, so the, the Microsoft version of uh, uh, the Project Planner, yeah, and uh, um, there are some advanced ones. There was uh, Access, I think, that you can combine with, but uh, uh, yeah, so uh, um, th this is a hard planning tool if you want, yeah. So some other ones? That they are hard tools. Yeah? So it's, for example, uh, 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 mapping out how you want to communicate, your communication plan, the project management plan that some of you did already last semester with me. This is the hard side. Yeah? The soft side is uh, managing, making people talk to each other, yeah? and uh, understanding motivation, leadership skills. That, that is the soft side. Yeah? Actually, this module is very much the soft side. Yeah? There's only a little bit of the hard side. Yeah? So you can actually, uh, uh, in skills development, you can make workload uh, plans and things like that. There are a lot of planning tools as well that you can combine with uh, uh, the project management plan. Who works one? What skill are they performing on site? Yeah, but uh, um, uh, qu quite frankly, uh, um, actually, I've said this of the um, tools and techniques in my uh, um, suggested uh, uh, skill set uh, uh, list, yeah? so you can have a look at that, but uh, usually um, this is not the direct remit, should maybe be, uh, of the project manager, and yeah, we'll come to that in a second. Yeah, but uh, it's, it's very much the soft notion about leadership, management, there yeah, being uh, um, as well assertive about how you can motivate your team, your related subcontractors and so forth. Yeah? And uh, this has been recognized under the project management uh, um, professionalized. Yeah? Uh, um, if, if you go with any accreditation system uh, um, uh, from professional bodies or, or sometimes nations, then you will see that uh, um, there, there is agreement that you have to comply to. Uh, the easiest thing to measure is using the tool. Uh, 
Yeah, so they ask you, for example, do a, a screenshot from your last project, submit a project management plan. So this is often how they access it. Um, the ISO standard now goes a step further and interviews your team members, the people that you have worked with. So they do actually a soft approach to uh, monitoring how you have managed your team members, how they felt you have actually uh, led the project or not. And, and there are already trends, uh, it's, it's quite funny on, on that notion. Uh, um, uh, we, we have already the first uh, reviews done across Europe. Uh, well, let's, let's play a little bit the stereotypes, it's uh, a little bit inappropriate, we come to, come to equality in a second. But what do you think is a stereotype for Great Britain? Where, where are they really good? So we, we, it, it was the model that we had last time. I should, uh, the, this was uh, actually quite... Um, This is it, more or less, yeah. Uh, so where do you think uh, 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 the, the British project managers score? The, I, I should add here, um, those are projects that are larger than uh, 5 million uh, turnaround, and uh, um, they are somehow uh, in the productive element. Uh, with the service, there's a slightly different model to this. Where, where do you think the British point yeah. high? Partnerships. Pa partnerships, oh, enablers. So, uh, uh, sorry, the, they, they're being, I, I should have really, so uh, they're, they're really good in establishing partnerships. Yeah, yeah okay, this, uh, actually they were all pretty good at this. I think this is a common trait, but uh, okay, I, I see where you're coming from, yeah? Partnerships and resources, yeah? Well, uh, uh, let's make it specific. Are they better in people results, customer results, society results, or, or key performance results? Society results. Okay. Uh, not, not so much on the British uh, projects. But what are we really good in, in in the UK? If you think of a trend. Actually, the trend is on the US. I can give you that up front. Okay, well, I take it away uh, to, to take the attention. <coughs> So uh, customer results, great in Great Britain, yeah. Uh, um, G Germany, uh, which was quite sad, uh, oh, it's not even in it. Uh, um, they were really good in cost control. Yeah, actually, they, they, were, they were recommended as the elite example, but uh, they really, they were weak on the people side. Yeah, uh, um, they didn't really, uh, uh, so people results very low. Uh, and uh, um, my, my other favorite was Sweden. They, they were really good in society results, but the customer was really not happy. And uh, um, okay, no, but uh, it must be then under partnerships and resources. And uh, uh, the cost went completely out of the roof. Yeah, but uh, um, if you have a look, uh, you, you can actually see there's a database you know, on current trends, and it, it's quite entertaining. Yeah, so, but uh, okay, that that aside. Uh, um, so that, that was just a, a little excursion, but uh, um, the data is there, yeah? so it's uh, uh, public. But unfortunately, what is really sad for education, you cannot look into the projects that they have submitted because they submit actually all the data, project management plan, what uh, um, uh, organization uh, structure they have. So it's a really good assessment, but unfortunately not for uh, the public eye, so it's confidential because of commercial interest, of course. Yeah. Okay, so that, so much to the non-technical competences. Then we have the uh, traditional organization uh, um, where the individual gains know-how and experience by working within the function. Now, so um, we, we have said traditionally in the uh, um, company where you, um, if you're in a manufacturing company, engineering company, design company, this is literally what it comes to. Uh, as, as indicated earlier, in the UK, we have said as well with uh, um, the specialisms, for example, quantity surveying, that companies focus just on that element of the construction process. Yeah, it, it means, of course, enormous uh, fragmentation for construction. Yeah, it, it, it has its benefits and disadvantages, of course. Yeah. Well, what would be, uh, like maybe let's, let's do a poll. Uh, and remember that some of you may have worked actually previously in, in roles like that, where it was actually quite, uh, um, Specific to the profession, isn't it? Yeah, well, in the Japanese review, yeah. the job was made, so 
Trump, uh, and did your company do a little bit of everything, or, or was that uh, yeah, uh, just different professions? Of, you know, so you had the manager of surveillance, industrial, office agents, things like that. So uh, architects as well, but they know design team. Okay, so you had your own design yeah. team. So they, they went actually for the whole project approach, mm -hmm. really, to, to kind of the design. Yeah, okay, this is a. Uh, uh, that is a bad example for that, yeah. but uh, um, in, a, in a way this was good for you, yeah, because you could see as well what your colleagues would be doing in, in those areas. Yeah, you, you get a, a easier access and uh, easier insight into uh, um, what your surrounding uh, um, team members are actually doing. Yeah, so it, it's very good for learning uh, in a way, whilst uh, uh, here you, you become very good in what you're doing. Uh, you, you become an expert uh, uh, in, in your uh, particular professionalism, and probably within those areas, you have even your specialism uh, within a professional area. Yeah? So in, in uh, um, comparison, to the project-oriented uh, um, company, individuals gain know-how and experience working on a series of projects in different roles on the projects. Um, this needs careful management. Yeah? So uh, um, this is normally what especially project directors are very good in. You start on a project element uh, um, a particular remit, yeah, and uh, um, you may even have somebody that uh, supports you uh, in, in terms of mentor or, or work shadowing, maybe even, yeah, or uh, um, associated uh, um, skills <coughs> development roles. Yeah. So, yeah, stepping away from that for a, uh, a, a moment, I, I wanted actually to, to bring this in uh, from Reingart. Uh, uh, it's really the whole notion of. Uh, um, yeah, what I kind of indicated earlier on in the bigger context. Yeah, so we, we live in a society where we have uh, this uh, projectification and it, it has meant as well that we have to watch more out for our uh, occupational health and uh, um, it relates as well to the um, greater health and safety debate uh, that we have here in the UK. And uh, I wanted actually to arrive as well at the workers' well-being and your well-being. Yeah, to, to show you actually uh, one thing that I really like uh, uh, in that uh, uh, context. So at, at project manager's level, yeah, if you talk to project management directors in, in companies uh, across the world, they kind of all agree that that is a good idea. Uh, let's see if I can find it quickly. A show effect again. Uh, um, okay, let's try it in English. Uh, yeah, okay, let's. It was a wonderful picture, basically, that I was after. Uh, um, This is visible. Yeah. Uh, oh no, it's, it's where it starts. It's wonderful. So this is kind of the, the development route uh, um, for the project manager on the soft side. Yeah, when you come to actually the um, uh, organizational skills that you need as a project manager, yeah, it's it's kind of the recognition. Uh, um, so you you have to develop uh, um, as a uh, yeah. The the analogy is here, of course. Uh, um, you have to evolve to the uh, sufficient uh, uh, human yeah, that, that can actually uh, uh, train on the craft, learn the hard facts, yeah, and uh, uh, then the soft facts. Then it comes to multi-project management, yeah, where you're actually challenged with having to uh, um, 
yeah, here as a metaphor, juggle with the different projects. And then it's really this uh, international multi-project environment yeah, where you can, uh, with your management style, even succeed international. And then the next step is really the intercultural project cooperation where you appreciate the diversity of different cultures and you can really create synergies to perform even better. And then the last step, uh, uh, no, sorry, second last, the uh, work-life part. Yeah? So where you actually get all this done within the allocated work hours. Yeah? Uh, um, yeah, I think it's uh, um, eight or, or seven possibly. Yeah? This is a benchmark at least that you should get your job done in. And then last but not least, uh, it's, it's being in consciousness level balance. Yeah? So this means you, you have this well adapted, uh, um, uh, I suppose uh, where there's a spirit notion yeah, there's a, a, um, a fitness notion yeah, from being uh, uh, healthy physically. And then there's this, well, there was another one. I, I've forgotten uh, uh, one. This is very bad. Yeah? But uh, um, the, uh, it, it's literally uh, um, the notion that you should be in balance basically with your uh, work. Yeah? And, and we come to that in a, in a second a little bit as well. So. Um, on the managerial and director's level, we have already buy-in. Yeah? So you don't have to convince those guys. Yeah? This is already some. Uh, uh, this is already what they're there. It's more the line managers, and uh, um, those, those are probably the first people that you come in contact with. They kind of haven't bought into this, or, or may not even be aware. So uh, um, we, we have say enormous issue because um, there, there's very little consistency. Yeah? So the occupational health and safety is, is often. Uh, um, regulated on national policy, uh, um, sometimes even regional, yeah, so that you have actually a, a, a diversion there. So there's a very little common ground. Yeah, and, and just, uh, um, how, how do you see this? Let, let's uh, uh, do that poll. What, what do you think is a, a, a good work-life balance? What, what would make an optimal working day for you? So we start, of course, by this is our fictional day, yeah, but it's worthwhile establishing the bit, uh, uh, fictional days. And then leave the private stuff a little bit down, yeah? So uh, actually, I, I go first, yeah, because I, I, otherwise I'm slightly panicking here that we uh, get into uh, um, slightly uh, um, uh, uh, dangerous territory. Yeah? So uh, I, I wake up after uh, um, a good night of sleep, yeah? so I'm, I'm fully uh, uh, recovered. Then I have some private time here with my family uh, in the morning, have breakfast with my family, then uh, um, kind of uh, uh, combine my work to, uh, uh, yeah, my way to work with sports, yeah, so I cycle or run there or something like that. Yeah. Or, or maybe uh, even, yeah, swim, no, that's too intense for me. So something like that. Yeah, and then uh, uh, work for three hours, uh, uh, yeah really productive, and then a uh, lunch break with some sport, yeah, play some tennis or something like that, yeah. uh, with, with a friend, very important, yeah, with friends or, or, or colleagues, yeah. and, and then uh, uh, another three or four hours work, and then uh, um, yeah, uh, um, a tea break maybe with uh, uh, friends and colleagues again yeah, to, to discuss important matter, and then uh, again sport or something like uh, running home or so swim home or, or yeah, probably cycle home. And then in the evening, uh, dinner with the family. Uh, and then uh, more activities with the family. And then, uh, um, oh, uh, I forgot, yeah, the, the walk the dog or something like that. Yeah? So uh, once are around the house, you know, and uh, uh, walk along the beach or something like that. Yeah? And then uh, uh, go to bed. Yeah? Yeah? So is this a uh, concurrent some people smile, so your, your optimal day is clearly different? Or, or is, is this a good reflection? <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So we have buy-in, yeah. So, uh, um, what, what what would you make maybe slightly different? Are the hours uh, too short, too long? <laughs> Get the family in the morning. Yeah. So, oh, uh, just uh, family in the morning. Oh, just skip skip it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so uh, after the morning, uh, uh, wake up and straight to straight side, to straight to work. Okay, is, is work with sport combined or? or? Uh, it depends. How uh, physical your work is. 
if you're like in an office environment or there where you have to be out by the computer, I would love to. But if you're on site, you'll walk around on the address rather take the car. Yeah. Okay, so this depends really what, what your work is requesting. Yeah. To from you. And then we, we come to that in a second when we work through the point. Because there's a physicality if you stand a lot or you walk a lot on site around. Uh, it, it's quite uh, uh, intensive on the body itself. You know? okay. Oh, I, I forgot important parts. Uh, um, there's, of course, I, I forgot the whole meditation stuff. Ah, okay, I'm, I'm heartbroken. So in the morning, yeah, you should take three minutes or so as well to meditate yeah, and the evening again. Yeah, something like that is not quite that for as well. Yeah? Does, does somebody have a very different view? Are the work hours long enough? Is through, uh, six hours enough to do effective work? People are getting skeptical with me. No, <laughs> wait a minute, what, what is he talking about? <laughs> Okay, so commitment to work, you have already different sentences, yeah? But uh, uh, you, you like the idea as well? Is this a good mix? Mm -hmm. Then on other days, do you have uh, uh, this optimal day that it's uh, literally just eight hours and, and sometimes yeah. maybe with team building at the end of the uh, day? Yeah. Um, yeah. There, there, there are different companies and, and different structures around. By the way, I, I don't live my optimal day. Actually, never. I've never had that in, in one day as, as such. Yeah? Because this is still my aspired day. But uh, uh, those elements are certainly there in the week. Except the three hours work and then going home. Uh, this, this hasn't really happened. Uh, um, but uh, um, so the, the, the importance with something like that is to realize really um, what works for you. And be very careful. We have a lot of policies. But I haven't yet seen a company where the occupational health or organizational health is uh, fitted for you as an individual. The, the whole point that I wanted to arrive at is that actually that it's a personal notion. Yeah, so you, you have to look as a project manager uh, after your organizational health and you, you should keep it as well in a balance for your uh, um, team members and work members. Yeah, as a project manager, we are of course trimmed to, to uh, uh, make our team uh, get the job done yeah? and uh, um, often where we are on such a tight uh, performance schedule of our productivity level that we actually uh, have too little time effectively. Yeah, so we, we encourage of course as project managers probably long hours, quite frankly, or, or very uh, committed work. Yeah. And uh, um, this has an implication as well. And there are different ethical uh, um, yeah, commitments to this, quite frankly. Yeah. So uh, um, yeah. in, in some countries, it's just regulated with compensation. This is all I'm saying. Yeah. So you get more pay if you work harder. But what harder is, is uh, um, free to interpretation. Um, yeah, with this, uh, um, in, in the UK, we, we have actually made quite a lot of headway. Uh, so we, we have actually organizational health. Um, we, we have come to uh, um, things like uh, um, flexible work hours and things like that. So we will come to that in a second. But uh, um, just to point a few things out, people, and, and uh, this is vulnerable workers, but uh, this is actually a general term, uh, there, there are particular groups, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I say unfortunately, uh, um, this comes from uh, sociologists. Yeah? Uh, um, one uh, person, is a, uh, or that one philosopher that is really interested in that, he's a philosopher and sociologist, is uh, uh, Pierre Bourdieu. Uh, um, he has actually looked at that, and he sees particular people being in a lot of trouble with this, yeah? of, of uh, being, um, so what is opposite? Uh, are your workplace exploiting you? And uh, the vulnerable work workers, uh, um, he related that even back to um, social class. Yeah? So the background where you're coming from. I, I don't really like this category because you're not telling us a lot uh, uh, with this. Yeah? So uh, um, uh, the, the key categories that I would probably come to is young workers. Yeah? So especially if you're entering into the workplace, 
you're of course eager to gain experience, but that is as well the time where you are the most likely to uh, actually uh, arrive at the things that I have listed below, yeah? uh, at, at burnout syndromes, uh, um, uh, injury incident uh, uh, um, uh, notions, and uh, uh, working long hours and uh, fatigue syndromes and burnout. Yeah? So, uh, um, valuing uh, a work-life balance uh, is quite essential. Other ones are migrant workers. Uh, uh, this is actually a very odd one. Here I don't really mean just uh, um, uh, uh, migrant workers that are maybe coming in on, on a contract basis, but that is as well uh, potentially me here. Yeah? Uh, uh, me being German, I, I come as well uh, into this category in Great Britain. And uh, again, it's uh, probably true because I identify probably maybe a little bit too much with the work. Yeah? And if you have that, there's a huge danger, again, that you work long hours, uh, um, fatigue, and uh, um, quite frankly, you lose potentially uh, uh, friendships, uh, uh, relationships to family and uh, relatives. Yeah? It's, it's as well the geographic distance by implication. Yeah? So th this becomes a very tough thing to actually maintain. Cool. Yeah? And you, you have often as well uh, uh, casual or, or, uh, and often uh, precarious employment. This is in particular when we actually look at uh, uh, laboring or, or um, what uh, uh, craft trades may come to construction sites. Um, this is actually internationally and sadly true. Yeah? So there, there is no real uh, um, country that I'm aware of that has uh, um, a good regulation framework. Yeah, so you can actually not divide here anything uh, between developed uh, uh, economies or, or developing economies. Um, and this is quite frankly true for pretty much all economies. Yeah, so even on, on big projects, uh, um, where Pooh has a good reputation, uh, Switzerland has a pretty good reputation in this, yeah, but on, on the uh, bigger uh, tunnel projects, they actually brought as well in uh, um, uh, workforce, uh, laborer uh, from Italy, and uh, um, they, they came as well on very strange contractual conditions and literally they, they, were, uh, um, they had to comply to Swiss uh, um, health and safety uh, that is mostly in French and German, uh, especially where the tunnel was built, although they were just uh, native Italian speaking, so they kind of had to adapt and, and learn by, uh, uh, by looking and, and uh, trying to make sense of it, of the health and safety. So uh, um, what, what I try to say is, those are vulnerable groups. Be, be aware of that. Uh, um, in many countries, you have actually regulations around it. Yeah? Uh, um, but again, uh, um, this needs a, a little bit more attention as well from you as a project manager. Yeah? So and encourage good practice. Um, then, uh, uh, what is actually the nature? And uh, uh, oh, this is an interesting term. Antecedents of injury. Uh, what, what, uh, oh, I should have really used a different word there. Uh, uh, what, what is antecedents? What does that mean? It's the reason. Yeah, it's, it's uh, um, yeah, quite, quite right. So it's, it's uh, where it comes from, or, or um, yeah, reason is a good one, the background. Yeah. Uh, um, so uh, um, injury and incidents, uh, uh, causations, uh, um, have often to do with the next uh, heading, actually. It's uh, um, Long hours, fatigue, and burnout. Uh, um, often, uh, what, what's as well underrated is actually this uh, um, uh, work health and uh, um, well-being. Yeah? So uh, people actually not having the time to uh, come to senses and realize that they are fatigued. Yeah? So this has really to do with uh, um, yeah, planning the durations appropriately to the machines. So this, this depends again very much on the country that you're in. We had in the UK, yeah, so some heavy tools you can't uh, um, use longer than an um, established time. But there's a difference between those regulations and what happens in practice. Uh, so this is a big thing. Yeah? And uh, um, then, of course, health promotion is often as well not done. Uh, so um, the, there is an enormous difference. Uh, you, you have to understand that uh, you may be aware of this, but your workers may not be aware of this. Yeah? Especially if, if, uh, um, if you're trained in the company it, you often take it from the previous generation that that is the way you're doing it. Yeah? The, the old joke is that uh, um, uh, in the past, yeah, in, in, at least in Germany, uh, this was a big thing that came up in the news, uh, all the railings were actually uh, uh, painted with a lead painting. Yeah? It's, it's, uh, it's seen as a very dangerous thing to, to lick over something like that. 
uh, there because it, it's uh, poisoning. But uh, if you ask any uh, um, of the people that lived in that time, uh, um, if you have frost on one of those, but what do you do when you see frost? Who had that experience? You see an icy surface, what do you do? Some noise. Yeah, exactly. You, you try to lick it as a child, at least. Yeah? And, and quite frankly, this is uh, effectively a standard thing in Germany. Uh, for, for children, I should that's not, not for, actually I should be careful. Yeah? This is not a standard thing, but uh, um, it's a temptation for many children. So quite frankly, in, in Germany, uh, for generations, they have licked uh, that paint. Yeah? So this is all I'm saying. So there is a notion, basically, of a better inside. Uh, and it, it means as well that the picture of what is healthy for you and what isn't is kind of a social locality base. Yeah? So I, if, if I go and, and work now in Mozambique, I cannot enforce my understanding. I, I, first of all, that, that would make sense yeah? the, the, in Mozambique. There's not very often that you lick eyes off of a, a lead rating, yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah? So um, there is a, a appropriateness and it, it enforces um, that you are as well sensitive to this. Yeah? So you, you, as a project manager, have to understand your context and environment that you're working in. Another one, uh, um, so this was under the topic of health promotion. Then we have as well the uh, notion of work stress. And here I pointed already out last week. As a project manager, you have to create stress, ironically. Yeah, so stress is a, um, a motivation engine for moving our project as well forward. A lot of our tools are actually geared to give us an indication where we are in our project to alert us that we have to push on, otherwise we will be late. This is a key role for us. We are the key motiv well, uh, key communicator as a project manager of such. Yeah, so, but, uh, um, it's important as well to recognize, and, and we come to that when we talk about the virtual team and fatigue actually in psychology terms, uh, when it comes to the individual, um, how we can spot something like this. Yeah, if the stress is actually not, not proactive anymore, people are not buying in, they are not performing well, but uh, um, they're stepping actually back and, and feel overworked, um, that they even find it challenging to, to uh, get out of the bed, yeah? uh, or something like that. No, this is a bad example, maybe, also getting out of the bed. But, uh, um, yeah, there are uh, signs basically where you see that. Yeah. And uh, of course, the uh, most important thing as well is uh, uh, trust uh, um, and uh, um, the work environment. Yeah. So uh, um, the ideal day, if, if I would be, I had a, oh, a wonderful colleague, uh, um, and his ideal day was pretty much like my day. Yeah. So uh, wake up, uh, uh, family business time, and then uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, spiritual time, yeah. So uh, for him, that meant uh, praying, then uh, breakfast, then uh, um, yeah, then possibly bringing the children to school, maybe playing with them a little bit before they actually go into school, and then uh, coming to work. So then similar to my day, yeah. And uh, um, he had a very different interpretation, so of having dinner with the family. Yeah, so this meant really that they would sit for hours around the dinner, whereas my dinner would be maybe half an hour, and then we would stay at the table and talk, uh, or, or play a game, uh, something like that. So there, there were different interpretations of those roles, but it's important to appreciate that there are time commitments or activity commitments as well. Yeah? Or uh, um, yeah, we had other uh, uh, people that had uh, as hobbies extreme sports, yeah, where they were physically really, really tired. Yeah, so uh, um, to, to put them then again in a very physically uh, challenging uh, uh, job is uh, um, kind of counterproductive. Yeah? So you reach fatigue levels quicker. So uh, that, that is as well quite important. So where, where are your managerial influences actually as a project manager? Well, uh, um, I've just given you the headings actually. Um, quite, quite frankly, we do know that there are a lot of cultural issues. So as I said, it, it's kind of regional, national, sometimes even companies. We will come to that in a second when we come to equality and diversity. Uh, um, but there are different interpretations of those. So your managerial influence is really management commitment uh, to uh, um, occupational health. Uh, uh, this is often already there at top level, yeah? especially if you're in medium to large size companies. Uh, Normally from small to medium-sized enterprises, there comes a, a appreciation. Normally one has a, um, what do you call it, when your hearing goes? Yeah, uh, this is a, a side effect, but it's a temporary uh, deafness. It's from stress, or you're losing sight. 
this often uh, uh, said, so be very careful in small to medium sized enterprises. This is a phenomenon that we nearly find in every fourth company happening to a manager when they're expanding. Uh, you are still thinking you're getting more jobs. Oh, I can do that too. This just means I have to work a few hours more. Yeah, but then one thing goes wrong and uh, um, it literally uh, uh, impacts uh, uh, on your um, health levels. Yeah, so uh, normally at medium size uh, managers or, or the owner of the companies normally appreciate occupational health to a large degree. Then you have uh, worker participation in the organizational health process. That doesn't help if you just have a policy somewhere flying around. Yeah, it, it should be as well uh, encountered and like uh, uh, communicated. And then, of course, provision of uh, organizational, uh, um, uh, occupational health training as well. Yeah, making aware what the uh, um, uh, healthy um, diet may be. Yeah, I did myself, uh, we, we worked on a, a construction site in a nature reservoir. It was pretty much uh, uh, five hours from everything away. Yeah, so you, you had to provide food as well. But if you have a, 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 a diverse team, you know, they, they have very different food requirements. Yeah, well, what do you think would be a food that everybody can eat? Is it the, the South African beef? No, it's, it's a joke, yeah. So, of course, that, that was not an option, yeah. So, uh, uh, we, we catered for that too. Oh, yeah, you have been there, yeah. We've been uh, it's just, uh, uh, fascinating, yeah. This is quite an experience. Don't eat a lot, quite frankly. Uh, uh, um, but uh, it's, it's very filling, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, uh, um, there, there are different uh, delicatessen. So, if you have a, a, um, a diverse uh, um, Team, don't. Uh, uh, this is what our chef came up. We just uh, we, we just serve soya all the time. Everybody can eat it. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to have lunch here. So they all brought their own uh, lunch along. <laughs> but the problem is, if you're working then in 40 degrees, you know, and you don't really have proper cooling facilities, uh, um, there is a whole smell experience to be faced if you have that. Yeah, so either cater for this, or uh, um, you have to diversify the meals. Yeah, this is what we came to. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, there, there was as well a lot about uh, um, yeah, different uh, uh, foods that were preferred by some and not others. Yeah, and, and this can be a great opportunity to actually create awareness. Yeah. Then it's as well to do with hiring practices. Yeah? So uh, um, uh, defer here from uh, maybe just bringing in uh, um, on a project level your friends yeah? uh, or your, your network. Uh, um, so this is uh, just to, to show the duality to recruiting randomly completely, yeah, so there's somewhere the healthy balance in between. Yeah, but uh, um, uh, uh, for projects, you need to have, of course, a team that functions, but uh, 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 um, uh, just recruiting uh, your, your friends creates as well a monoculture that is uh, actually very handy. Yeah. Then uh, reward systems can be tailored around it as well. Um, I think two of you in the papers picked up on that. Yeah? So uh, you have probably written quite a bit around it. Yeah, so it's a, um, a reward structure. Actually, this was your paper, isn't it? You, you have uh, uh, written about this. Uh, do you, you as well? Yeah, yeah so uh, um, it's a reward and recognition yeah, of health and safety practice. Who is, uh, for example, doing a good job on the project site, how they did it. Yeah, and uh, um, so it's, it's very simple. And then you maybe have, uh, we, we talked about this, so isn't it? Yeah. But what did you do in your company? We have a reward system as well. discipline has its own separate sort of place in a lead table and it goes off the KPIs for the health and safety of health and safety officer. However ends up with the highest score at the end of the year. I think you get it yeah with new passive races and a couple of good for it. You, you, okay, so um so you have a league in your company, you know, that yeah. you're all competing on. Uh, are you leading at the moment? Well, yeah. Okay, okay, very good. So the, and, and uh, uh, as a reward at the end of the season of that league, yeah you go to the horse races, I take it. Yeah, so the company has like its own box at the Newcastle race course, so they open it up to like whichever team they want to okay. Did you have to sway your own horse? No, they don't have their own horse. Okay, so the ah, okay. That, that, I, I know, that was stretching it, yeah. Uh, uh, actually, we, we had no summer university, we have our own horse. Yeah, so now, now you know, we, we invested in it for quite some time ago. I think five years ago, when we had the surplus of money, and we invested it in a racehorse. Uh, there you go, you, you the choose that the university makes wise. Yeah, uh, um, yeah maybe, maybe not, <laughs> I'm not sure. But, uh, okay, but uh, uh, no, actually it, it wasn't a joke. We really have a, a, a racehorse. 
<laughs> this is not a joke, yeah? But, uh, um, but uh, uh, so you, you basically, I go then in the box, and, and this is kind of the reward. Yeah, it's a soft reward, but it's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah? And uh, um, that, does it work? Does it? Yeah, it seems to. Yeah. also have like a monetary reward as well. So somebody in particular, maybe somebody on site, Heard of uh, uh, basically what, what you said in yeah. and uh, uh, recognition uh, um, best practice uh, of the month or something like that. Yeah. Okay, very good. Yeah, and, and you you wrote as well a little bit about it. Uh, yeah. Did did you find similar patterns or? Yeah, more or less not for the safety, but yeah, it's like perhaps just the and so on. Use uh, I mean the waste. So this was really formalized, yeah. So, uh, but still scanned in. So from Japan, I would have uh, actually expected the next step already, and it's automatically recognized on site. But uh, okay, so we're scanning in is as well a uh, method. Then looking literally the tools that are being used in this context. Yeah. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, so reward systems can work, uh, um, but again, as a project manager, apply what's feasible to your proje uh, project context. Yeah, so those reward systems uh, um, have maybe different impacts on, on different uh, uh, yeah, localities, different people as well. Yeah. And last but not least, it's a communication and feedback. Uh, I told you my story. We, we had that uh, um, uh, guy that uh, always went into the workers and explained in very long and detailed uh, ways why they should wear uh, um, health and safety uh, equipment. And it seemed to resonate as nobody wanted to have the talk again with him. Uh, but it was his way of motivation uh, uh, mechanism. But the, the key effort, uh, um, emphasis is here really on the communication and feedback of that. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. Oh, uh, I ran completely over time. Did you want the, sh shall we push on? I have, I think, 20 more minutes. Or do you want a quick break? Push on. Push on. Push on, yeah? The 20 minutes was promising. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, um, actually, the, the critical perspectives to this is as well. Um, we, we had a, especially in, in Anglo uh, uh, yeah, section uh, uh, countries, we, we have looked if, if there's any improvement with organizational health in terms of productivity. Uh, return on investment and performance, and quite frankly, the empiric suggests that it's actually negative. Yeah. So it's, it's very sad, but uh, um, this is really more an ethical question. Um, it's, it's, uh, we have little evidence. The only guys that could prove that uh, uh, all seem to have a little bit uh, uh, biased. Um, the, there was a professor at Yale University that looked at uh, um, competences and skills, and if you are working uh, um, safely and healthy, uh, uh, um, you, you have normally larger buy-in uh, um, from the staff, yeah, because they feel as well evaluated as humans. They feel their life is not on the line. Yeah, so that was the only mechanism, and uh, it was argued that they're performing better. But, uh, um, the, the how they had measured that was quite ambiguous, yeah. But uh, um, not nonetheless. So it, it's quite a grey area there. But it's the right thing to do from an ethical point of view, and uh, from a moral point of view, probably as well. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, there, there's a critical perspective to HRM, uh, human resource management in construction, uh, as it's presented. And uh, um, in, if you look into scholarly contribution, you will find myself as well a lot in this area. Uh, um, so he, here's the big issue, really, with uh, well, what we have discussed and what's actually involved in it. Human resources issues too often lie outside the remit of project managers, who neither know nor care about the employment status of many operators on the project for which they are responsible. Yeah, but uh, you, you see already what we have done here. Yeah? The responsibility of the project is with you, but uh, um, it's just a temporary responsibility over the team that you are involving, yeah? so the greater team of the project. So that is really where the uh, issue kind of lies. What results is an employment relations climate characterized by separation, conflict, <coughs> informality, and a reluctance to embrace change, you know, to basically adopt a uh, um, practice that would be better. And uh, um, this is a, a more summary, really, of the UK. Yeah, but uh, um, uh, this uh, in Paris kind of comes from uh, uh, Dainty 2007. Um, I have changed terms, yeah, so uh, for correctness, I should say, informality, this is kind of what I have researched. Yeah. Before it was uh, um, uh, non-conformist ways or something. Uh, so uh, it just didn't make a lot of sense. So uh, this is a, a my small contribution there. Yeah. But uh, um, you, you can look at it in a, a very simplified way. Uh, uh, recruitment, then disposition, development, retention, and release. So let's uh, uh, make a little bit sense of that. Uh, um, so uh, when, when you actually uh, um, search for competent personnel, yeah, there's of course a company perspective versus project uh, uh, um, uh, perspective. Yeah, so um, uh, and then company internal versus uh, um, external. So what, what do I mean by that? Uh, uh, com company means really uh, um, that you have your employer role. You, your, uh, I'm for example, uh, um, oh, actually my job role is not, or maybe to you it is very linear. Uh, um, the, uh, in this company I'm employed to uh, be a lecturer. Yeah? So um, this is my linear uh, um, approach. But then I'm being recruited as well for research projects within Northumbria University, then with, within the UK, and then in, within Europe. Yeah? So I'm attached to different notions. That is actually what we have. So there's a company employment that you are based uh, uh, on to, to work on, but then you're being as well kind of rented out from this position to projects to pull your weight on this, yeah, and uh, this may be even in the same company, but it, it may be a, a different task and you belong to a different unit then. Yeah. And then uh, it's a question as well if it's company internal. So uh, um, I work, for example, on a research project in, in uh, research capacity, often or some real university, but uh, a large extent of my research activity, uh, uh, activities are actually external. And so I work with uh, research clusters uh, from other universities from uh, other companies together, and uh, the, the, it's completely external. Yeah? And it means as well that there are other requirements with it. Uh, so it means, for example, that uh, um, I'm, I'm an engineering and physical science research council uh, fellow, and I have uh, annual trainings that I do for them, for example, although it's external to the some university. And the irony is that neither trust, uh, no, I shouldn't say trust, but the, um, Northumbria, uh, I have actually done the same training three times. Yeah, so, uh, um, because the European Union has their own research framework, they want particular training, and uh, then the UK Research Council has their own, and then we have another one with the university. Yeah, so, uh, it, it has implications on the organization and how you're being recruited, eligibility. Yeah. With, with this comes a message for search and selection differ from the above. Uh, uh, for project managers, uh, so for you guys, maintaining networks uh, um, is empirically the strongest notion of staying within a project network. Not really surprising. Yeah, so you, you will be all project managers, you know each other, yeah, so you can talk to each other about what, what worked well for you to find a job, uh, if you're in the same area, or you can even com uh, compare sectors. Uh, there, there's no reason why you cannot, uh, um, yeah, why you couldn't change from one sector <coughs> to the other one. And then we have, of course, the assessment centers that actually do recruit. So um, in, in a nutshell, if, if you look at the skill setting, and the recruitment center, uh, um, they are actually looking uh, often with the written application for experience. 
yeah, and uh, illustration of skills. Uh, um, this is often the hard side of the uh, project. Uh, they may ask uh, uh, for additional feedback with references to get a little bit of an insight into your soft skills. If you're a good communicator, things like that. Or, or they, they may write me. If you put uh, me down as a uh, referee, uh, then uh, uh, sometimes they call me up and ask, like, has the student engaged in the seminars? Uh, is, a, is the person outspoken? And, and things like that. And then in the interview, you are really just looking if if the person kind of fits. Now, uh, sometimes there are different ways of interviewing. Sometimes you are being interviewed by a generic person. They kind of look uh, uh, for that you uh, can describe things contextually, relevant, and so forth. Yeah, but uh, when you're being interviewed, for example, by the project director or the company-specific person, they look that you fit in the company. And that is often very soft. Yeah. Then we, we come to the disposition. So uh, uh, um, it's the allocation of the project management personnel to projects and programs. Um, ideally, this would be as well uh, um, done on a recruitment notion, but often this is a default. Uh, so uh, um, you are finished on, on the past project, and now we have this project, and hey, you have done that kind of in the last project, can you not work on this project too? Yeah, and uh, um, this is something that is actually political. You will have to negotiate this. This is not always a possibility, but for your career, that is actually ideal. Yeah? So you should create this linearity that you have different aspects of project management on different projects, that you get a full picture of what's actually involved uh, uh, in, in that role. Yeah? So here we have said the optimization of allocation of resources in case of multi-project engagement. Yeah? So you may become a specialist in the design process or something like that but you would like to do as well the close-up and handover maybe. Yeah, so uh, um, there are different dynamics with that. And then the organization and support of the transition of uh, project management personnel uh, uh, from project to project. Yeah. So I, I hope that makes a little bit sense. Uh, this is really uh, um, summarizing an enormous uh, body of knowledge uh, and literature. But uh, th those are really the key dynamics uh, uh, if, if you look at it uh, um, in a bigger setting. Uh, so, and, and this is as well for you to negotiate, of course. Yeah. The development itself, I've as well given you a list what's actually kind of a, a good practice standard at the moment in our field. Um, personal development is a necessity uh, of building up the competences of the project management personnel by offering the possibility of gaining know-how and experience so carry it out on the job uh, very often. Um, I often prefer actually that you have a kind of uh, a given scenario that you work in parallel with the experienced person. So I name in a few uh, uh, seconds um, uh, the systems. And we, we have that in a lot of companies yeah, that have actually adapted that. Uh, so carry it out on the job or carry it out in a project or program assignment or in general outside of project assignment. So more as a training exercise, or even bidding for uh, um, yeah for uh, um, uh, uh, yeah if if you are looking at a particular position that you basically compete with the people that are working on the project and you make your suggestions as a comparative piece. Yeah, but you see already there's a repetition and it, it creates additional costs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is normally limited to project management personnel, but can be extended to include freelancers in the network. So, um, as I mentioned, uh, um, actually, uh, the, the network, um, if, if you look at my uh, um, LinkedIn profile, for example, a lot of my APM uh, um, friend network, uh, there's a whole cluster of them. They are kind of experts that come in on different projects for particular uh, um, freelance pieces. And uh, um, it works very well. So especially on larger projects or, or mega projects, this is often done. Yeah. Um, the development itself, the, the traditional forms is uh, uh, education, what you will hear, uh, uh, qualification, and of course then maybe training on the job. Uh, um, then we have as well the PM competence assessment, so those are professional bodies uh, um, and uh, uh, related uh, frameworks. Then you have a set uh, assessment centers for development. Uh, larger companies have those often. You know, they, they often couple that as well with universities. So if you're working at Balfabiti, you may see me and Eric again. Yeah? So don't, don't be surprised. Lange Rook as well. Royce Royce, if you work with him as well. Yeah? So um, there, there are a few companies that use actually universities 
uh, um, to, to do get um, a, a pre-setting of uh, education actually in. Yeah. Then uh, coaching, this is quite a nice one actually. This is my preferred method for project manager because it allows you that consistent feedback and you can check what your options are and what uh, um, maybe an experienced project manager would have recommended. But more in a, a, a kind of formative assessment. Yeah? So you get feedback and you, you may try out different approaches that have worked in the past. Yeah? So this is normally a very good setting, but uh, uh, quite time intensive, yeah? uh, depending on how it's done. Then general feedback. This means yeah, from the practitioners, if you share an office with other project managers, very powerful. Yeah, try to get a, a, um, a conversation going that way, uh, if you can. Uh, this is normally uh, informally rejected. Has anybody tried that? In a shared office, hey, uh, I've done this and this on the project. What did you do on the last project? Has anybody done this? OK, it's maybe just me. I have tried that. I, I run against the wall. It's like, oh my gosh, Robert, do you never switch off? Yeah, I get things like that now. So, uh, um, and uh, um, yeah, but uh, it, it's a. It, it's worth encouraging, yeah, creating a community of practice that you can work with. If, if you have that, then it's very powerful. In some companies, this is encouraged. Uh, actually, in, in French companies, this is really uh, encouraged. Uh, there's a strong bound between uh, project managers where you get uh, insight on how heck, they have done it maybe in the past. Often afterwards, but still powerful. Yeah? They first want to see what you want to try. Yeah? Uh, and if it's too uh, uh, scary, then they may interfere. No, I'm, I'm just joking. It's normally not that intense, but uh, um, I was in that direction. Then you have as well uh, training on the project, of course, uh, um, uh, that says what it uh, is on the tin there. Yeah? So you literally have like small positions that you're doing up front, and then you can see how, uh, how they would have done it. Sometimes they just work them as well, one to one. Uh, job rotation, yeah, so uh, working in different uh, um, support roles of the project manager. Uh, it's just a very, very powerful thing. And then support networks and communities, as I emphasized uh, earlier, and career development uh, committees as well. Uh, if, if you can get, uh, get involved in something like that, that is normally very powerful because you understand then as well uh, the, the wonderful difference between performing a skill and describing a skill, which is a very different uh, um, animal. So retention, uh, um, in general, in the project organizations and in the society that we have, how, how long do people stay per average in UK companies at the moment? If you belong to kind of the qualified population as you are, highly qualified people in front of me. So uh, uh, how long would you stay in a company by average in the UK? I, I take guesses. Okay, I start with the other way. I'll tell you a little bit about Germany. In Germany, we have a company called Bayer. I don't know if you know them. They have their own football club, uh, handball, basketball. They have everything. They have even their own church. This is how wonderful, wonderful, creepy, oh, I don't know. But uh, they, uh, um, and they have their own city scene. Yeah? So there, there is uh, Wuppertal and Hürding. Actually, there are three cities. And Leverkusen. Yeah? So three cities where the main manufacturing plants are and you, you can see their plants from the satellite. It's large, yeah, very large. They employ around the world 500,000 people, yeah, to give you an idea. It's bigger than Liechtenstein, yeah? so uh, there they go. Yeah? And uh, um, the, the problem with this is, uh, well, first of all, it sounds really good. They, they have even their own hospitals, they are very committed uh, uh, to sport, yeah? they, they encourage you to uh, come in the same company. But, how, how long do you work for them? You get born into this company. You don't leave. Yeah, so uh, this was a past notion. They even have uh, schools. Uh, they, 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 I wasn't joking when I said that it's cities that are built and funded by uh, a buyer. Yeah, so they, they supported this by the local community. There's a lot of uh, the social well-being of the people. But it progresses very slowly. If you compare those cities, they have now a really nice infrastructure. But they were always three steps behind the uh, behind organic cities that just grew naturally. Yeah? So there was a request for kindergarten where the local community makes a kindergarten. In, uh, uh, in, in cities uh, um, that uh, Bayer was based in, you had to make uh, a plea for it, and then uh, three years later you had the kindergarten as well. Probably a nicer one even, yeah, but uh, uh, it took some time. Yeah, so, and and uh, a lot of people stayed there for life. Yeah? I have an uncle, he, he is now there, yeah, and he still is there. 
and uh, yeah, I leave it with that inside. Yeah, and, and he is still a big fan. And uh, um, it, it creates a monoculture. Yeah, this is a big issue. There's not, it's, it's a, a multinational company. It's very diverse if you walk in, but uh, you're surprised. They are all behaving very similar. They all have the same culture because they're exposed to the same environment all the time, more or less. You don't have to, but of course, it's internally more or less encouraged. Yeah? So it fits for some, not for all. So what? what uh, uh, so this is lifetime yeah, in that particular company. What, what is the average? UK. And has somebody been in employment longer than two years? Okay. Yeah, this is good. We have three. Longer than five years? Oh, okay. Only one. Uh, the, and, and longer than seven years? Okay. Longer. Than, this is good. Uh, I'm impressed. Yeah, so you, you pay average is five, and uh, um, longer commitment seven. Then so you, you have the majority of the world market. Yeah. The uh, um, the uh, twenty five percent to thirty percent move after two years. So this means in many projects you haven't even completed the program. Yeah. But there, there's an important notion to this. Uh, it, it shows you as well the fragmented notion of the project. That, that I emphasize, that people come to perform the role, of course they're not staying longer than two years and because their job is done on the project. Yeah, but uh, project managers do stay longer with project-oriented companies, whilst other people normally leave within five years. This creates a huge dilemma because uh, um, the knowledge leaves with the individuals often. <coughs> yeah, so how, how they have worked on, on past projects is often uh, um, leaving the door when you're going into a new job. So you don't have that person that worked on the past project anymore to ask. Yeah. Um, it, it means as well there's a two-way street of commitment. Yeah. And uh, um, uh, yeah, as project managers, uh, um, actually a lot of you do that already. I think quite subconsciously and very powerful um, uh, in, in building a psychology. Uh, I can't say it probably psychological uh, contract. Yeah. Um, <coughs> as in like getting people committed to you as a team member. Yeah? So those are strong mechanisms. Uh, and uh, um, last but not least, incentive and motivation systems have a high impact as well, especially for project managers that seems to be a, a very important notion. Yeah, the uh, release, uh, um, there, there are two different uh, forms on uh, looking at this. Uh, um, I have just summarized them here. Uh, uh, so for a temporary personnel and uh, 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 project, you, you kind of hope to arrive at organizational learning where you capture the insights of what people have done in the past. And uh, uh, for the individuals, if you want to work on, uh, uh, if you want to uh, um, go on to another company or another project, then you, you will need an individual review, some feedback. Uh, so you, you should as well, as a project manager, kind of encourage mechanisms to get that. A review maybe from your team, a 360, uh, three, yeah, 360 uh, a feedback loop yeah, from your boss, from your team members, from the people that you work with. Uh, very powerful. And normally that is uh, um, as well, uh, um, if you go in a bigger company and there's an HR department, they really appreciate that. Uh, um, it's normally easy access there. And uh, um, it gives you as well feedback yourself, so you kind of uh, um, can show where your address is. Okay. Along this uh, um, sits a whole hidden dimension. Uh, actually, do you have any questions at that point? This is basically human resource management uh, summarized in five slides. It's, it's quite ambiguous. Yeah? So uh, um, there's a lot more to it, but at project management level, th this is a good start. Yeah, uh, um, yeah th this one is actually quite dear to me because uh, um, a colleague of mine is working intensively on this. And we have actually pretty cool uh, findings on that. Um, it's a whole notion of equality, diversity, inclusion, and work-life balance that, that we had already earlier, uh, with the work-life balance. Um, but uh, uh, I think it's a, a little bit different uh, perspective on that. Uh, uh, Sang and Paul uh, um, really wrote on this, and, and they criticized the whole notion of equality. But uh, non nonetheless, they first uh, described it quite well. So equality, uh, um, but let's do it the other way around. In your work environment, do you think it's equal? Uh, do we have equality here? Equality, 
quality. In here. Yeah, outside. Okay, you you like that idea. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, you said you hope so. Yeah, I mean I think so. Nice. Okay, okay. So uh, yeah, you are a little bit skeptical, but uh, overall you haven't yet seen any facts that suggest otherwise. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I describe the concept first, and then I ask the question again. So equality, the state or, or condition of being the same, especially in terms of social status or legal and political rights. Yeah, you are treating everybody equal. This is normally the notion. Yeah. Uh, uh, Culturally and how we are uh, um, coming into the world, this is certainly not true. Yeah, in the family, as a baby, you, you are the first one that's not being treated equal, quite frankly. Mostly uh, on safe grounds, you know, uh, uh, it would be probably quite insane to do so. Yeah, but uh, um, what, what I try to say is that uh, um, it, it doesn't really come to an equal state uh, until you reach adulthood in, in most societies. Yeah, and even that is debated. So, uh, but that, that is at least a plea. Uh, um, if you uh, come to equality, and, and here I really yeah, focus is often, when I say often, it's often in policies. Uh, so uh, if you read Northumbria University policies on equality, we have that actually. It's, uh, uh, it's just like separating uh, minority groups. Yeah, so uh, equality in that context is often associated uh, again with uh, uh, so yeah, I, I belong to the minority called er, early career researchers. Yeah, so there, there's not more, uh, uh, but there, there are many uh, ways of doing this. Uh, um, and it's a notion you, you uh, um, uh, fo uh, often focus on treating minority groups the same irrespective of their difference. Yeah? So um, this can as well backfire, as, as, as I have pointed out. Uh, uh, in the next one, so the emphasis is on subordinated group assimilate to dominant group culture. Hey, yeah, yeah, okay, this is a lot of, I uh, should have really simplified that. So, what, what does that mean? Well, we have said in construction to a huge degree. So, the emphasis of, of equality is you're being treated equal. No matter uh, who you are, <coughs> but there, there are visible differences. Yeah. When I was very young, when I was 18 on the construction side, and I, oh, what is the English term for this? It's a big drill that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping here for the right uh, English term. It's a drill where you basically open up the road. You crack literally the road and then you can pull the asphalt off. Uh, what would you call that? Is it just drill? Oh, this is ambiguous. Like okay. okay. a jacker on, on a machine sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's like quite big and, and you literally hold it and kind of press it on and uh, it's literally... Just a breaker is not like break, break breaker is the term, yeah. Okay, now uh, th this will do. So, yeah, I, I was using a breaker and I, I was basically on this job and there was me and uh, three other people and at the time, come, come to my my current appearance, yeah, I was still rowing and, and uh, quite fit, so I, I could perform straight away the thing. Yeah? Whilst the other people, quite frankly, they, they hadn't trained up to this. Yeah? The, it, it was really heavy machine, it was, I think, uh, um, 50 or 70 kilos. Yeah? Well, what is that in, in stones? It's uh, 12 stones, is that correct? 12, 12 or maybe 11 stones? Ah, I haven't done the math. Yeah, but okay, it's very heavy. Yeah, so um, the other two people with me that I should swap with, well, there, there was no swapping. They, they were <laughs> holding the thing for two minutes and then back, back to Robert. Yeah, and um, so it, it was uh, all I'm saying. There, there are physicalities and conditions where equality is a dangerous thing to do. Yeah, you, you have then to go for the lowest common dominator as a project manager. Yeah, or or you, you have your specialist for this. Yeah, so take this into account. This is very important, yeah, especially when it comes to uh, 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 work commitments. Yeah. Well, th this whole thing, and uh, actually I can account it to a colleague of mine who, who now, uh, she was in the past when I started my research really uh, um, uh, uh, um, in uh, Loughborough, but she's now in Sydney. 
And, and she really kind of uh, made a big plea for the deficiencies with the concept of equality lead to the recently uh, uh, proposed term of diversity. So it was a notion that if you have a culture, and it's, it's very uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, monoculture, yeah? so it's a dominant culture on the construction side, and you do do things different, then sometimes the culture can adapt. This is often very uncomfortable for the people that work in a cultural environment. But uh, um, I think the famous example here in the UK was as well with uh, drills in the past. We had for a lot of installations uh, um, very big screws and uh, uh, worked in a certain uh, um, heavy machine uh, environment. Nowadays, we have actually a lot of finer, we, we have changed the interface basically. We use other systems and you don't actually need uh, heavy machines anymore. Has, has changed as well kind of the skill of the um, uh, people that work with it. Yeah, so um, to, to actually realize that and allow a certain uh, um, appreciation of doing the same thing in a different way, we, we call that key term pluralism, yeah? allowing that you do the same thing slightly different uh, as long as it still hits uh, a quality standard, sometimes even better so. Yeah? Uh, um, that was a recognition of a, a recent uh, proposed term of diversity, which was quite uh, in diversity and inclusivity. Uh, we, we started with diversity and then biosec, for example, yeah, we, we are really diverse, we are good in this. And then we, we kind of went in like, no, 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 you suppress all the other cultures with your culture. This is not what we are after. Uh, so uh, um, this was kind of the notion. So hence it's now diversity and inclusion. Yeah? So it means that you are welcome to. And here, workforce diversity is a variation of social and cultural identities among people working in a defined employment setting, so here by are still completely in. Not organizations can numerically diverse, uh, uh, can be numerically diverse, hence by example, uh, without uh, uh, being inclusive or multicultural. Also, this was certainly true uh, uh, for the bio company. Things I have worked now on it, to be honest. Uh, this was like 12 years ago, yeah? Loose, uh, loose more, uh, as well as sitting in Australia, uh, ironically, this were in Newcastle, yeah? so quite interesting, uh, my, my colleague there. Uh, he, he basically came uh, uh, up with an enormous study. He, he looked at uh, Great Britain, uh, Australia, America, um, South Africa, New Zealand, Hong Kong, and I think Dubai. Dubai? Yeah, no, it was Dubai, I'm pretty sure about that. And he basically came up uh, uh, and, and could actually show that there is empirie that the concept of diversity recognizes the differences between people and it harnessed, uh, uh, if it's harnessed yeah, from you as a project manager, can create a more productive, and here are the real, uh, productive is always nice, but here are the real strengths. It can be more adaptable, more resilient, this is actually what we find at the moment. Uh, so if you have a, a diverse workforce, it's a lot more resilient to change. Yeah? So normally you have more inspiration. People have a slightly different perspective. You have a, a wider variety of options, basically, as a project manager to make a better decision. Yeah? So this is a power, really. And uh, uh, creative, uh, oh, sorry, uh, I did that. Okay. Uh, a creative, uh, inspiring work environment where people feel valued and their talent is fully, fully utilized. Another side aspect, uh, um, it creates as well a better work-life balance. So this is what I've experienced by myself. You get curious about other cultures, you try uh, um, uh, to name a few uh, dance and music out from other cultures and you realize, hey, this is not bad either. Yeah, so it enriches as well your personal life. Yeah, so if, if you uh, um, are curious about this. Yeah. So enormous, uh, uh, a strong uh, argument for that. Oh, and in the diversity, uh, um, in this literature, you uh, find, of course, especially in construction, uh, 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 seems like uh, um, uh, women in construction, yeah, uh, um, be it uh, um, ethnic minorities as well. But uh, this is actually, yeah, uh, but uh, it's literally all age, uh, um, uh, uh, ethnicity, uh, uh, gender, um, Age in both ways, by the way. There's a whole debate at the moment. Uh, age groups above, uh, um, I think, 55 on the construction side. It's an interesting topic, apparently, at the moment. And uh, uh, a lot of research. But it's, it's literally the whole sociologic uh, uh, notion. And uh, um, it, it's very, very powerful. Uh, so having a diverse team can enrich your practice. 
Um, what, where are the barriers to this? Well, uh, um, uh, there, there's a, a persistent stereotype of uh, discrimination. Yeah? So this is a cultural notion, what is actually uh, um, in the work environment. Yeah? So persistent stereotypes, uh, discrimination potentially, sometimes even a playful discrimination. Yeah? No, nonetheless, it's maybe naive meant. Uh, uh, and uh, um, yeah, turning out the other way around. Then uh, networks, so this was a little bit what I pointed out. Yeah? I kind of recommend you stay in your networks, yeah? uh, uh, um, make your contacts yeah? and, and stay connected, but don't recruit only from them because it creates in a monoculture. Yeah? So you're reinforcing uh, um, your belief methods and you're not open to new views of the world. Yeah? And, and we have gradual change around us. Yeah? Then you have, of course, recruitment and training practices can be very disencouraging. In construction particular bad because it's often exclusive. Yeah? So you only get access to it if you really know somebody in that company or, or you have somebody really making the case for you to do it. And then we, we have as well policies versus practice where we have actually reasonable practice or, uh, uh, policies around while the practice is very selective. In some areas it's very good, in others it's not. Uh, um, if, if you read my papers, it's actually a little bit worse. We have done it regionally here in the Northeast. And the sad thing is that the rhetoric is different to what's actually going on. Uh, so uh, um, there, there's another uh, um, step aside from that uh, um, where um, they are not even doing what they are saying. Yeah? So um, then you have procurement practices that are not really favoring this either. Long work hours. Uh, um, my, my favorite one is actually America. Uh, where, um, to, to pick a very specific one, uh, um, the Americans see pregnancy as a disability. Uh, so uh, this is a very harsh statement as I make it, and I make it a little bit provocative. But if you read the policies, uh, um, uh, the, the, they actually state, um, with pregnancy there's a disability to do the work, and uh, they haven't even capitalized, uh, it's just shocking. Yeah? Uh, um, whilst uh, I had an American friend who uh, wanted to come to Germany or Sweden yeah, to, to have their her baby because they are, it's, it's, a diff, it's just how it's framed. Yeah? So rhetoric is very important on that level, that is what I'm saying. Uh, to, to, uh, um, to work uh, when, when you are uh, pregnant in the tenth months uh, or ninth months, yeah, it's probably crazy, quite frankly. Yeah? Uh, uh, but uh, um, I, I'm, I'm saying here that it depends as well on how it's framed and how it's actually defined. Yeah? And uh, long working hours, uh, if, if this is inherent in the culture, this can be an issue, yeah? if it's not focused on what you're actually contributing. Then we have as well a fragmentation, yeah? so we, what we recognized earlier, we have a very fragmented uh, a process uh, when we do construction, and last but not least, it's the assimilation into the industry. Um, this normally happens uh, uh, actually here, university, educational uh, um, uh, yeah, institutions, where a, a certain prevailing culture is kind of uh, um, transmitted. Yeah, so uh, uh, I belong as well uh, to a degree to construction, but I do know uh, more research probably in a whole raft of industries. I, I like cross comparisons uh, um, from different industries. But if you look at somebody like Eric, he has worked in his whole uh, life in probably the Northeast uh, construction industry. Yeah, so there, there will be a, a certain uh, um, uh, um, forms of behavior that are prevailing to him. Now, and you, you have to look if this is the same for you or, or uh, um, in, in other places. Yeah. And uh, uh, assimilation means as well, yeah, so uh, um, you are kind of uh, getting used to that behavior and start repeating it in your own way, of course. Yeah, but the, the test is uh, um, uh, assim assimilation aspect to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I said as well, uh, um, the uh, role of the project management office in that context is uh, um, simplified, uh, uh, enormous, uh, uh, um, yeah, short if you want. It's ensure ready uh, supply of professional project and uh, program managers, which would be you. So this is super, yeah? they're, they're on your side straight away. And uh, provide management support of projects, programs, often by providing project manage managers and program managers to project and programs <coughs> in the relevant sections. Uh, so you, you see already that they may actually think about um, training your particular aspects of the project. Often this is done in, in the project lifecycle stages. Uh, so there may be some better in the conception phase, 
uh, um, creating the project with the client, others are better at de design or, or uh, bidding uh, when it comes to actually uh, um, uh, planning out the project, uh, then uh, others are better in managing the project and others are better in, in uh, actually looking at the quality and making sure that it's delivered as planned. Yeah, so um, those are often uh, classically divides, and that is a little bit where the competence viral can be. Yeah. Then de uh, develop, of course, individual and organizational competences in the project-oriented uh, uh, company. Uh, he here it's often as well that you, you try to build actually uh, stronger links with your supply chain or preferred companies that you're working with. And then last but not least, manage project portfolio related services. This is mostly uh, reporting uh, um, costings actually and KPIs to the portfolio holder. You know? So this is literally the key role of the project management office in this uh, position. Uh, um, and uh, um, if you have informed ones, if you work for a hedge fund or something like that, they will ask you as well how many people are qualified. So they have their competences and capacities. Uh, this is how hedge funds often uh, steer their uh, um, financial investment decisions. Yeah. Okay, any questions at this point? Sorry, that was quite a riot. We have covered a lot of terror. Okay, this is it then for me, for now. In, in the seminar, we will uh, actually uh, play a little bit around with uh, um, organizational settings yeah, and uh, have a closer look at that. Oh, and it was not 20 minutes only. <laughs> <laughs>